Hello wonderful person, this is Anton, and today we're going to be discussing some of the new discoveries coming from the outskirts of the Milky Way galaxy, and specifically somewhere between the Andromeda, which you see right here, and the Milky Way. And that's because, relatively recently, some of the scientists using some of the modern techniques were able to discover these really exciting stars known as RR Lyra stars, pretty much right between the Milky Way and the Andromeda. And even though technically they could be considered to be intergalactic stars, in reality, they're actually part of the Milky Way, representing a part of what's known as the outer halo. In other words, they've discovered some of the most distant stars from our own galaxy at some ridiculously faraway distances. Once again, confirming that the Milky Way galaxy is a lot larger than we originally thought. And so let's discuss all of this in a little bit more detail, starting of course with the idea of the Milky Way and its structure. Now, to some extent, this shows us what's happening here. We obviously have the galactic disk, the inner halo, and the outer halo. But in reality, the image of the Milky Way, as you might have learned from some of the previous videos, is way, way more complicated. In the last few years, the scientists have discovered that not only is our galaxy warped and stretched, it also contains a lot of shifted and twisted structures around it, it contains a lot of different streams, and it also contains a lot of material and a lot of gas, and of course stars, and globular clusters, at the outskirts of the galaxy, orbiting thousands of light years away. Moreover, it was discovered that the actual size of the galaxy, if you include things like the outer halo, is approximately 1 million light years across. And since the Andromeda galaxy is also around the same size, it means that technically the galaxies are already touching and are already colliding. This was only discovered a few years ago. But because this is science, you always want to have more proof of even the most common theory. And so here the scientists were really trying to figure out if the outer halo really reaches that far. And there's really only one way to do this. Look around and try to discover as many possible stars around the galaxy, indicating that they really are there and they really are as far away as we originally assumed. But that's of course the most difficult part. Measuring any distance in space is usually very challenging. And normally to find distances to relatively close objects, the scientists tend to use stars that exhibit various patterns. For example, they kind of blink. And the most popular type of a blinking star to measure distances is known as the Cepheid variable. These are stars that generally do something like this. They increase and decrease in brightness quite regularly with a very predictable period. Here's one example from M31. And in this case, this usually depends on the mass of the star and usually produces a very specific type of brightness. And so by knowing the period of the variable, it becomes possible to determine its maximum brightness which can then be used to create what's known as the cosmic ladder, also known as the standard candle ladder, which in essence depends on understanding how bright certain objects are, and by knowing their brightness, it's possible to then determine distance to those objects. This is literally how we know the distances to pretty much everything around us within about a few million light years. At farther distances, there are other things like redshift. And this is especially true of various global clusters. They tend to contain at least some variables inside of them, which allows the scientists to determine very precise distances. And one such variable is also known as the RR Lyra, named after the first such star. And these are actually really exciting stars that can potentially determine super exact distances for one simple reason. They all produce almost exactly the same variability. Actually, they almost look like a heartbeat. The brightness goes up really quickly and then comes down really slowly with an extremely predictable cycle and a very specific shape and their average brightness is usually relatively seen independent of everything else. Moreover, they're usually around half of the sun's mass and generally contain the same spectral class, either A or F, implying that they were all made from very similar stars, approximately 0.8 solar masses. But more importantly, unlike other Cepheid variables, which are normally found around the galactic disk, the RR Lyra stars tend to be everywhere, independent of the galactic structure, and can even be found extremely far away from the galaxy itself. And that's because of their mass. Their mass allows them to survive for billions and billions of years. And they actually remain the same with the same properties and the same pulsations for this entire time. And so in a typical galaxy, because of various galactic collisions and galactic interaction, with time all of these RR Lyra stars can find themselves in any part of the galaxy even super far away. And because of their age, they're also extremely populous. They're probably the most common types of Cepheid variables. Several thousand are already known, and it's estimated that there are maybe about 85,000 in the entire galaxy. 
which of course allows the scientists to then measure distances, especially if we find these stars, inside various objects such as global clusters. But in this case, that's not what the scientists wanted to find, because they really just wanted to find some of the farthest ones in order to identify the potential limits for the outer halo. But because these stars are not as bright as some of the other stars, at certain distances it becomes kind of difficult to see them. These are not giant stars, they're actually even smaller than our sun, and so trying to find them at even thousands of light years away becomes a bit problematic. But there are obviously missions that have been trying to map stars for a very long time now. For example, the Gaia telescope has mapped about 140,000 Lyra stars already, with many of them still not analyzed by anyone. But in this recent study, the scientists managed to find some of the farthest ones using a slightly different and more clever technique. In this case, the scientists realized that previous surveys of various faraway clusters, such as the Virgo cluster that you see right here, would often try to erase or get rid of various foreground stars in the same field of view because they were mostly interested in distant objects such as galaxies. You can kind of see that there are a lot of missing stars in this image. But this unusual byproduct is exactly what the scientists behind this study wanted to actually analyze. Turns out that some of these stars were our Lyra stars and some of them were really really far away from the Milky Way, which allowed them to find 208 stars anywhere from about 60 light years away all the way to 1 million light years away from planet Earth. And all of them pretty much located in the halo of the Milky Way galaxy, confirming that the outer halo definitely extends to a distance of about 1 million light years at least. And although in this case, the scientists also believe that it's mostly made out of dark matter, it also definitely contains quite a lot of gas and a lot of stars, and extends to much much farther distances than we believed. And so once again, the Andromeda and the Milky Way are very likely already touching. Or basically, the collision between galaxies has technically already begun. Or maybe to some extent. The gas is already probably interacting, and some of the outskirts stars might already be passing very close to one another. Although, as I've mentioned previously, it's quite unlikely that any of the stars will ever collide. But I guess what's important here is that, using this same technique, it's not going to be possible to discover even other stars, possibly even farther away, and potentially even map the entire structure of the outer halo if the scientists can use other surveys to discover even more stars. Although I guess one thing that makes these particular stars kind of interesting, intriguing and mysterious is just the fact that they all seem to be mostly individual stars. They don't seem to come in pairs or in binaries. And so even their origin story is a bit mysterious. But I'm sure more discoveries about the Milky Way are going to be made in the next few months, just like so many previous discoveries in the last few months. You can find some of them in the description below. On that note, thank you for watching, subscribe, share this with someone who loves learning about space and sciences, come back tomorrow to learn something else, and maybe support this channel on Patreon by joining channel membership or by buying the wonderful person t-shirt you can find in the description. Stay wonderful, I'll see you tomorrow, and as always, bye-bye.